good afternoon everyone welcome to the uh, lecture number 8 in fact it's going to be the last official lecture uh yeah so today we'll briefly discuss about exception handling in c++ so unlike exception handling in c++ uh, this is more structured in fact uh, it's also similar in java though there are some dissimilarities so yeah typically we could we would encounter errors during execution so mainly it could be due to the program error that is the responsibility of the programmer but there could also be errors due to say wrong input say for example if you have a division operation where the denominator is zero you don't want that error okay uh, though that error can be captured in the at the processor level or there could be other unforeseen things okay uh yeah so depending on what the error is so typically c++ will stop execution okay and generate an error message one thing is it allows us to handle this error scenarios okay in the c++ terminology or it's also a terminology used in uh, the operation uh, unix operating system environment uh such scenarios are called exceptions okay so the technical term for this will be we say c++ will throw an exception so for example divide by 0 is an exception okay uh yeah so c++ allows us to handle this in a structured fashion see what will happen is like uh, so one typical way that you would have done is you put if then else statements okay whereas uh, uh, in c++ it allows us to have blocks which you monitor and if there are exceptions it allows us to process the exception what we call as catching the exception okay yeah so these are the uh, necessities or these are the features of c++ uh, exceptions okay so it allows us to separate error handling codes and normal codes okay you can have sections of course which are meant for handling error in your program uh, during the run time of course uh yeah so you must have done this in c uh, or even c++ those who have done but uh, yeah in c typically c or any other programming language which does not support uh, major uh, exception handling mechanisms they will basically if then else conditions or if uh, else conditions okay the problem is with such a thing is i mean these are very difficult to maintain or difficult to read okay so the codes become unreadable okay uh so one advantage with c++ exception handling is uh so you can have a separate section for handling those kinds of exceptions or errors okay and for each type of error you can have a different uh, kinds of error handling methods so error types will be grouped here so yeah so we have uh, taken the most of the material for this slides are from uh, geeks or geeks except hello so can you confirm if i am audible sir so you are audible yes sir okay 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 there was a message in my screen saying trying to connect a uh, network or whatever okay yeah okay uh yeah so the try is the block of code where so basically we are telling the program that okay so this part has to be watched okay so whenever we detect an error so we use the word keyword or function throw okay so that is throw an exception and catch is a statement which allows us to catch the exceptions that are thrown okay we'll see how to use this so these three are 
keywords in C++. So, let's go to the slide. Yeah. So typically, this is how it looks like. So the try section. So this is a section of the code where uh, we want to watch for uh, errors. Sorry. Okay. So at some point, if you detect an error, so you say throw exception. Okay. So this could be a data or a class object or yeah so data like an integer or a string or a character whatever or a class object okay so this so this is essentially saying we will call the exceptional handling mechanism with this as the exception as the parameter now catch is a section which determines handling mechanisms all it does is it matches the types so if so catch you will have a parameter here it could be int or float or double uh, any other uh, data type or user defined data type but only thing is it has to match with that of this call here okay you can have multiple catches but the one for each parameter so for example if you want to say okay uh, so you want to see the, if the user age is at least 15 to get the access so let's say this is the core segment so try segment so age is assigned to 10 initialized to 10 if age is at least 15 say access granted okay else this is an error okay so throw with the age as a parameter okay so the catch section here so we have catch with the integer parameter okay so whenever exception thrown so it will go to the catch section okay so it, only thing is the parameter type should match uh, so here the message i mean this is the error handling mechanism the message that we want to be displayed uh, access denied you must be of whatever 18 years or i wrote 15 years so 15 years old okay and maybe you want to also have the age displayed so age entered is okay so yeah, so this is how it looks like. So this is try blocks and the catch description should be outside the try block, okay? Uh, the way it matches is, so whenever you say throw, it calls appropriate catch mechanism. Only thing is the type match has to be there, okay? So if I say throw uh, some character parameter, it won't automatically convert it into character and call this. It will give an error saying that there is no corresponding catch mechanism, okay? Yeah, so this is a sense of uh, exception handling in C++. Now, the advanced, I mean, uh, one thing is, so here catch can have at most one parameter, but it can be also a class object, need not be basic data type, okay? It can also be a class object. It can have user-defined classes. And for each type, one catching catch mechanism you have to describe. If you have uh, described multiple, then it is ambiguous. The compiler will give you an error, okay? uh yeah and uh so all i mean so for example like i said if uh, age was a character so if i say throw character here and if i didn't have the corresponding catch mechanism uh that it will throw an error in fact that will be a compiler error. okay so yeah so this is another example this is again i, I got it from my degrees for things okay so this is a, a standard division <laughs> so let's say the division is the function you want to check if uh, divide by zero is happening so if b is zero you just throw so throw this parameter like i said it can be anything so this is basically a string class this is basically going to be a string okay so division by zero condition a string being pa uh, passed so the corresponding catch mechanism okay sorry so now if you see, this is not in try block, right? So where, where is a try block? Wherever you're using division, that should be in the try block. Okay, so int x is 50, y is something, uh, z is something. So z is equal to division x, y. So then it should throw an exception, okay? Whatever, so this is the try block. Then you should have a catch block after that, somewhere outside uh, the main it can be, it need not be essentially exactly main itself. Uh, the catch block only thing is it should be a character string here the type should match okay so it will display the message this is another example so just talk about certain uh, things so in some scenarios you may not want the parameter to be specified you just want one 
exceptional handling mechanism for all types. Okay. So you can implement it. So see, usually catch, you have a parameter here. You have to mention the parameter type. So to allow any parameter or any type, so all you do is you put a three dots here. So it will catch all exceptions. Any throw, it will catch. Okay. So for example, in this code section, so you're having the try and you're saying throw 10. Okay, so this is an integer parameter, but unfortunately the catch here is expecting a pointer to character or a string. Okay, not a string class, a class, sorry, uh, string data type, I mean, character array. Uh, unfortunately, it won't come here. Okay, so to handle that, well, you can have catch int. Okay, so then you can have some um, error messages there. Okay. But in case if you want to be flexible, I just not, I don't really want to care. So about the parameter type, anything other than string should be handled in one specific way. So I can have catch with three dots. So the three dots says no uh, type match. It can be anything. Okay, I can just say throw or throw, throw with some parameter. Anything other than string will come here. So yeah, so that is a mechanism to catch all exceptions. Okay, all exceptions, irrespective of the parameter. So if you, if I had int separately here, then I had char uh, throw with the char type, then it will come here. Int it will go to int. Okay, so only thing is there can be exactly one parameter here. You can't have more than one parameter, but you can need not have a parameter as such. Okay, so you can treat this as a default action. So another thing that we need to keep in mind is uh, uh, in the case of exceptional handling, there is no implicit type permissions. Okay. So for example, in C or C++, when I say a function called with the character data type, if the function was taking integer as parameter, it will be automatically converted, right? Converted to integer type. But in the case of exceptional handling, there is no such thing. So here, this code segment, uh, throw a will actually call default exception, okay? So the default exception will be called because there won't be in, uh, implicit permission. So now what if we didn't have this default at all, this catch section? So then it will give an error. Just there is no type permission, okay? So the, in, fa in fact, it will be a compile time error, time error because uh, the type is clear here, character type, okay? It's not blind or blind. Okay, so yeah, so there will be an error if uh, we didn't have this section. Okay, so this is something that we need to keep in mind. There is no implicit type conversion. And now, is it does it have to be in or any uh, built-in data types? No, you can also have uh, classes here. So you can also have a class object being passed as a parameter for catch. Then there should be type matching. So if it say this is class student, then the, it has to be student class. Here. Okay, so yeah, X should be of type student. That should be proper match. Yeah, one thing is, I mean, uh, so it, at least the implementations I have used, they allow only one parameter. Okay, so there are some places which they mention that catch can have multiple parameters. Uh, but at, le at least the implementations I have used, it does not reduce an error. Uh, so one way to achieve is you can use say pair or vector classes, okay? So to have multiple parameters. So otherwise it's just one parameter. But since user defined classes are allowed, you can of course uh, implicitly pass multiple parameters. Okay, yeah, so this program will, uh, yeah. So in, in fact, yeah, one more thing, I mean, it won't be a compiled term error, it will in fact terminate abnormal, okay? So sorry. Yeah, because uh, yeah, so when when I, so this the compiler will not match. I mean, so what I mean to say is, even if I hadn't declared this catch section, right? Compiler will not compiler might give a warning, but otherwise it won't create any problem. Okay, but uh, what will happen is the program will terminate. Okay, because this is uh, this is a runtime process. So, 
Yeah, so there is one issue that I wanted to discuss about uh, using classes. Okay, so like I said, you can for throw you can call it with the class object. Okay, so for example, I have suppose a base class, some class, and a derived class which has a base as public member. I declare uh, d as a variable, object of type uh, derived. Okay, so this is a try section. Somewhere I am ca calling throw d. Okay, so I can pass this as a parameter. So only thing is the corresponding catch should be there. So the catch should have a derived as a parameter. But then of course I can also declare uh, define a catch with the base. Okay, but only thing is I mean you see the way C plus plus processes is it's, it does it in a sequential fashion. Okay, so this catches it checks in a sequential fashion. Okay, so when you call throw d. So it will actually catch it as a base class exception. Okay. So even for even if it is a derived class, but catch will actually say uh, see the base class exception. So whenever you throw exception with the derived class D, object of type derived class or base class, it will automatically catch this one. Or in other words, this code block or this catch block block will never be reached. Okay. So if both base and derived classes are caught as exceptions, then catch block of derived class must have appear before the base class. If base class appears first, then base class will be present. So it, basically the C++ dynamic environment, what it does is it will basically go, go through one by one okay, in a sequential fashion. Whichever the first match, it will just, and this is how most of the operating systems also uh, handle exceptions. Whenever you have, exception it searches for the exception sequential okay so the first match even if it is base class it will be triggered as a match and it will be called okay so if you want the derived class exception to be handled then this is the way to do it. so you should have the catch section for derived with the derived class as a parameter come first then this can be called so now if you say throw uh, b which is a say suppose a class object, uh, object of type base, then of course base will also be called. Okay. So yeah, so this is something, of course, this is a very uh, obscure thing, but need to keep in mind. Sometimes you might run into trouble to, where to use this. Okay. Okay. Yeah, so one more thing I didn't really, uh, I'm, I'm not talking about is there is also exceptional, uh, exception library. Okay, so that's an exception class, which you can use as a base for handling exceptions. So see, the advantage of using uh, exception class is you can pass many parameters and you can also have procedures, okay, to handle exceptions. So there is also built-in library called exception. So you can use hash include exception. There is a class called exception, okay. Uh, you can use it. Uh, there are many built-in functionalities for handling exceptions, and there are also you can also I and mean, many people also implement it. Uh, so they have a derived class of the exception class, and then use the functionalities there. Okay, it depends on what kind of uh, 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 exception handling mechanism for you. Okay, yeah. Okay. Okay, so this is all uh, we needed to talk about uh, C++. So I'll just give an overview of the assignments. Uh, so assignment seven is already greedy approach. So the assignment seven, eight, nine, ten, these four <coughs> assignments will be about implementing algorithmic paradigms taught in uh, the theory course or attached theory course, that is CS2800. So far, we were, I mean, the first time in the uh, idea was to implement, so teach a concept in C++, object-oriented concept in C++, and then implement using that. So now onwards, you will have to use most of that, okay? Uh, most of the con uh, concepts taught together. Uh, also, you could use STL, okay? So most of these will be built on STL, so you can, uh, use STL to uh, implement these ideas. So the rough plan is uh, 
yeah so the current assignment is uh, greedy uh, we gave uh, minimum span entry next assignment so we'll change the order depending on what is taught in the course okay so dynamic program implement one uh, one or two dynamic programming algorithms assignment 9 i mean like i said the order might change uh, depending on how uh, cs2800 is done uh, implementation of two shortest path algorithms and then assignment 10 uh, this again depends on it could be i mean what is taught in cs2860 so if network flows are taught then it will be implementing a network flow algorithm or it could be another say for example branch and bound or something out of the box okay so we will we'll, uh, keep you posted Yeah, otherwise everything else, the timing, everything remains the same. Uh, only thing is, like I said, it's about concept. It could be slightly more intense programming than uh, you have done before uh, in the previous assignments because you'll have to understand the. Yeah. Sorry, somebody say something. Yeah, so even if Kruskal is not taught, you can. Pick an algorithm. Pick, pick the algorithm from the textbook. See, I'm also aware that there are people who are who have are not doing this course. Okay, so but these are standard textbook algorithms. So if, if take any reference textbook and implement the algorithm. Okay. Say for example, uh, CLRS has Kurskels or um, algorithms by Jeff Erickson or Tardosh and Kleinberg. Any of these textbooks, they will have Kurskels as well as Prims. Uh, so Abhishek, uh, so see multiple throws of int, int type, right? You cannot, I mean, you, you can have, so you can have multiple throws, but catch can be only one. It can also it can be ambiguous, okay? So it will always, see, you can write catch, int, catch, int, catch, int, but it will always call the first one because it's a linear, okay? So it will not, uh, it will, basically the remaining two int type will be ignored. I'm not sure if compiler will throw an error, uh, but, uh, at runtime, the later ones are ineffectual because these catch things are basically done um, in a linear fashion. Yeah, this is true about, in fact, you see this exceptional handling in C++ is, uh, I, I think, essentially borrowed from exceptional handling in Linux and Unix environment, which is also derived in uh, Linux, okay? Um, so where exception handling is done very linear fashion, okay? So see most of these things, I mean, in fact, uh, traditionally even input output is treated as an exception. Nowadays, I don't think so. Uh, at least the older operating systems, uh, that is how it works. Okay, don't worry about it, okay? So one thing I'll just tell you, if you are not getting an email regarding plagiarism issue, your plagiarism will be controlled. Okay, so if you are getting an email, then worry about it. Be worried about it. Okay. Yeah, so Tejesh. See, if you are not being approached for anything, right, then you don't worry about anything. Okay, so that, that means your plagiarism will be controlled. If there is an issue, we will contact individually. Of course, the, everything will be done before the start of answer. Yeah, so this is the last class in the sense that this is the last compulsory class. Uh, next lecture, what, what I'm planning to have is, I'm planning to, okay, so yeah, I wanted to talk about that. See, uh, so what we have done is we have introduced con object-oriented concepts in C++, okay? But if you uh, look at, so, Unfortunately for your, uh, so most of the BTEX here, right? I mean, at least in computer science, there is no software engineering course, okay? Which, uh, yeah, for some reason uh, it was taken off and it's not being offered. So if you see the literature, there is also object oriented programming course, okay? So object oriented system development. What I plan to do is in the next one lecture, I will give an overview of that, okay? A brief overview. See, there are many things uh, as a developer, one could think, say, say, for example, right now we didn't have, so what we did is, okay, create a class object for this, okay? 
uh, some of you have already seen very at, at a very very rudimental level some of the viva questions right not everyone i think uh, some of the viva questions were also asking okay if you were to design a class how will you do it or what is the inheritance structure you have and so on okay so this can be done in a very systematic fashion so there is something called unified markup language uml uh, where you can represent your design as object relationship diagrams okay so for each class object you specify the methods and then uh, you draw the inheritance structure interaction structure and so on so what i'll do is i'll briefly talk about that i'll not go very detailed but give an overview so that those who are interested can catch up but that is not part of the syllabus or whatever this is just an extra lecture okay so it's an optional if you want to attend you can attend but it, uh, it's not a must okay if there is further interest i might take one more week okay so if people are interested in it i might take one more week it will be more abstract and it will be like um, yeah there could be a couple of concrete examples as well but it won't be more about it will be more about software development rather than program Okay, so can somebody tell me uh, what is being taught in uh, the design and analysis course, uh, CS2800? Uh, did you start on dynamic programming or shortest paths? Oh, M MST is being done. Okay, okay, fine, fine. Okay, so for the next assignment, what I'm going to do is we will have dynamic programming, but I will give the specific reference. Okay, so I, I thought MST was already done uh, because when I when we I talked to class last time, what was that? Greedy algorithms were started. Okay, so I thought MST must have been reached already. So what I'll do is in the next assignment, we'll have a reference section so maybe even before the assignment i'll tell you which algorithms to read okay then uh, contest will be formulated according because we can't wait any further because uh, these concepts will have to be implemented i mean so, so greedy dynamic programming with the shortest path algorithms uh, or any other uh, the last one could be net netros is good i mean it's also very useful or could be any other algorithm okay. so these at least three are a must. Okay, so in modern day programming, um, let us, I mean, uh, algorithms, these ideas we should be able to implement. So we'll stick to this. We'll not really wait. Okay, so what I'll do is I'll give you a reference for the algorithm, which algorithm to implement. Then it will be easy. Okay. Understanding the algorithm will happen as it, uh, you go along in that course, or if you are doing it on your own, you will be ready. Yeah, yeah. Once again, this plagiarism issue, you don't have to worry. I mean, many people have been asking me in the Viva. I'm just going slow on it. Uh, like I said, the serious ones, the real, uh, see, right now, what we did was we looked at line numbers. Okay. So how many lines match and so on. So we have put a threshold and we have given the penalty right now. Like it's a provisional penalty. We'll just look at it again, look at the code structure and so on. Uh, so Usually, this MOS, what it does is it go, shows segments of codes which match. It's not just about variable naming and all. It's the structure of the code. It creates, I mean, uh, those who are doing CS uh, will be seeing this kind of structure uh, when you do compiler, how the code flow happens. Okay. So, that diagram, so they, they don't show the diagram, but they the structural similarity they show. Okay. So, that is how. So, many times it can happen that two people are thinking similarly and so on. But so we'll see the abnormalities. So when you look at the code, right? Suddenly, if the person's thinking changes, that you can make. Okay, so that's what we are doing. We'll, we'll uh, do that. So if you didn't get message before the end send, that means you don't have to worry. Okay, so those who have, I mean, those we have an issue with, we will call for a meeting where the penalty or action taken will be there. For others, penalty will be withdrawn automatically. There's nothing to that. So the penalty is only now deterrent and provisional. Okay. Uh, 
Okay, so this is about NSEM. So NSEM uh, initial plan was to have it on April 26, which we cannot have because uh, one week we lost in the break. Okay, uh, so it has allowed to be on May 3rd during the lab session. So like MITSEM, but this will this time we will not have VIVA. Uh, because we are not going to teach any further con uh, concepts and the viva was basically about OO concepts how how much you can articulate what you have learned uh, yeah only a few of you had no idea of object oriented others could not articulate so you, your marks are essentially about that okay uh, yeah so those who have got lower marks i request you to go and read more about object oriented and learn to articulate. So these, these are important in the sense that, see, knowing programming is very important, but even when you know how to program, many times if you can't articulate, you cannot communicate ideas to your team members and so on. Okay, so you should be able to articulate the concepts very well. That is important. But uh, for the NSEM, we are not going to uh, do that because we, do, we are not teaching any further uh, concepts in C++. Uh, so there will be no viva. So we will have either one or two contests. Like, like I said, uh, so the math splitting will be now 23 plus two, two for coding practice, uh, assuming that there will be two contests. 23 marks will be hacker. Okay. So again, if you, uh, so the test cases and so on, we will also, those who have scored really low in the hacker rank, we will be looking at the codes manually later on. Okay. So before the final grading, I will be going through each of the codes, those who have scored less. If you have scored full in hacker rank, we will not really look into that. Okay. If some marks can be awarded, we will do that. Yeah, so please, re I request you to block uh, May 3rd, 2 p.m. to May 4th evening. So we will have it as like exam should be doable in four hours for an average student. So that is the plan. Uh, yeah. Sorry. Somebody wanted to talk. Okay. Uh, so this window, so the actual deadline would be slightly smaller. Like I said, uh, in the mid sem we kept it from 2 to uh, 11 p.m. It could be shorter. It depends on how the contest come and so on. Uh, and uh, yeah, it, it will be likely to be shorter, but I request you to block this space. Okay, so that, that there's no problem. But it won't be just four hours because because of the situation. We'll give a larger window, and also those who are slightly slower. I mean, we'll be happy if we can complete the program. Okay? So our main objective is to make you program. Uh, one contest will be implementation of an algorithm idea. One contest could be something slightly new. Okay? That we will we'll think about. We have to see how how the program should be. Okay, so. Yeah, also uh, for the extra lecture next week, if you have any topic. Huh, so, Madha Mittal. Uh, so, see, one thing to notice, there's nothing called absolute grading, okay? In the IIT rules, right, the original rules, now people are changing it, of course, uh, I mean, because of the uns uh, unusual circumstance. That is nothing called absolute grade. Okay, so grading is, so if you look at the rule, grade book or whatever, the attendance book that we are given, right? So there, there is a grading rule. Okay, so what it does is, it gives you, so for last classes, say for example, 100 plus classes. So the grading has to be, so the condition is top 5% can have S grade, okay? The next, so at most 10% can have A grade. So it basically says it has to be Related, related. There's nothing called absolute. Grade. Okay. So, but people can announce it and be done, but it has to be approved from the by the class as well as the class committee. So I haven't done any of that, and I usually don't do absolute grading. So I do only related grading uh, based on the average standard deviation and so on. I will not be applying the formula here, and in a programming course, we don't hesitate to give a large number of but in a theory, of course, no. So programming the ideas, you should be able to program. You should be good in programming. 
like i said the second contest might be testing your skills okay might be testing your creative skills but one contest will be about program just about program the other one could also involve problem solving okay so that way uh, yeah so there is no question of absolute thing i have uh, so in fact i have interacted with the colleagues here some people do it like but what i heard is it's illegal unless it is approved by the class committee and the class the student should approve first and then the class committee should approve okay but if you do absolute grading the problem is you can't have the freedom of like changing the i mean having assignments or being creative in assignments it has to be rigid assignment that that does not uh, work out or the exams has to be very rigid so if i say 90 is the cut off and then i have to give exam accordingly right uh, that is very difficult okay so uh, at least the first exam for the class will always be a trial basis we'll see how the class reacts how the class does and so on the purpose should be someone who gets s grade should be really really good okay someone gets a grade will be good okay so that, that is how it is so yeah so there is nothing like absolute okay but of course i don't want to play adversary okay i will make it hard and hard more I, i have some minimum set of requirements here the idea is you should be easily so given an algorithmic idea you should be able to build it in c++ in an object oriented fashion that is all i can okay and i was happy to see that many of you actually did uh, mid sem in within 2 hours in fact many and the majority of you did in within 3 3 and 1/2 hours after attempting that's very nice thing okay any any further questions see don't worry about cut off okay we are not uh, see i am i am not someone a robot like okay like like i said i th there is some number that we will have in mind but uh, like i said for a lab course usually we are not bothered about numbers so that's not an issue as such so don't worry about cut off So for a theory course, we are bothered about number. We typically don't have more than. See, it's supposed essay is supposed to be exceptional, so that is typically not more than five percent is what institute says. Uh, I personally won't have more than ten to twelve percent. But I will see if twelve. Uh, see if twenty people do exceptional level, I don't have any institution in there, and I will. I, I don't have any problem in fighting it out in the class committee with that. Okay, but. we have to see i mean that, that depends on the questions and so on right if you give really hard question and 20 people do very well you're happy what is the problem there's nothing to worry about okay so at least my advice is don't worry in terms of that i'll ensure that the grading is done in a fair fashion if there is a cut off the cut off will be at least will have a gap of 2 months i may not be able to ensure more than 2 months but 2 months i will ensure will not be disclo disclosing the cut off as a policy but this is something i throughout my career i have ensured if there is a gap i mean gap has to be more than that so otherwise this will give more grades there's no issue
will uh, stop the recording here, but I'll be staying up, staying on for further questions.